Is this on? Mm-hmm. It is on. Okay. If you're like me, <clears throat> then everything you do is very closely connected to the weather. <coughs> Something about me and the weather. If the weather is crisp and cool, I get much more done. If it's hot and muggy, I'm like, eh, I think I'll do it tomorrow. True. True. So some of us are very, very closely connected to, you know, the way the temperature is. But what if you live in a place like Miami or Bombay where it's warm all the time? You can't just sit around and do nothing. You can't just sit around and do nothing. So, what is it that motivates you? I mean, that is exactly what motivation is. It is that which makes you do stuff. And it could be anything. Motivation can be anything from just keeping a clean household, putting stuff away, to clearing out your garage, to writing a book, to changing your mindset, to developing a hobby, to wanting to save the world and actually doing something about it. It can be anything from the smallest task to the most mind-blowing, earth-shattering one. What is it that motivates you? A lot of us get our motivation from within. It's who we are. It's the kind of person you are. I've heard many of our people say, I can't sit still for a minute. I have to keep going. I have to keep doing things. I have to keep doing things. You know, I have to get stuff done. I can't, I can't take a nap in the afternoon. But what is the quality of stuff that fills your day? This time when I came back uh, on the plane, I was just sitting at the gate and watching everyone. And I was like peeking into the pers person's iPhone next to me. He's watching pictures of people who've done stuff. Change that picture, this one's done something else, change that, watch something else. He's just busy looking at other people's lives. And for almost 20 minutes that we were sitting at the gate, that's all he did. Today I went to Panera, we were waiting for, to pick up our sandwiches. There were two ladies there, nobody made eye contact, they were busy on their phones. Not doing anything specific, but just speaking into other people's lives. So if you're doing things, what is it that you're doing? What is the quality of your day? Even if you spent a couple of hours in a day doing something constructive, after all, you need only 20 minutes to get on the treadmill. Mm -hmm. You need only 20 minutes to meditate. Right? You need 10 minutes to do your breathing. And that can change the quality of your day. Most people waste their time all day and then say, oh, I don't have time to do anything. They come home from work tired, exhausted, sit with a plate of food and watch a show and then another show and then another show and then pretty much two hours go by and they watched four useless shows about, you know, people talking to each other about their fashion sense or whatever. And they said, I had no time today to go and exercise. You will be motivated for the things you are passionate about. If you want to, to, you know, be fit and be trim and feel good, you will go to the gym. If really you don't care about that too much, you won't go to the gym. And you can watch a million videos and write a million notes to yourself. Nothing is going to persuade you to go to the gym. Get off that chair and go to that gym. Motivation is always low, or 
I can say you have inertia instead of motivation. When your prana drops. Remember I said that we have seven chakras and your muladhara, your base chakra, when the prana is completely down, it's, it's called laziness, inertia, lack of enthusiasm. <laughs> As your prana rises, the enthusiasm builds. So what do we do to increase our prana? Eat good food, nourishing food, so you're not eating a plate full of pasta. Or pasta. Pasta, pasta has <laughs> carbohydrates. <laughs> pa carbohydrates. And carbohydrates make you a little bit dull. Fresh fruit and vegetables, a great salad, a well-balanced meal, something that tastes delicious, automatically sparks a little bit of enthusiasm in you. After a good meal, you'll feel very, very energetic. Automatically, you get the energy that you need for the things that you need to do. The second is sunlight. People that live in the north of the country get depressed, you know. Again, it's all connected with weather. I mean, even though I complain about the sun and I complain about the heat, I love the sunlight. When the sun rises in the morning, I'm like, okay, it's going to happen today. And I've been saying that for the last four or five years, every morning. And you know what? Nothing spectacular has happened. But I've enjoyed whatever's been happening. Because when we're motivated and we're thinking about something that's going to happen for us, sometime in the future, we kind of miss the present, right? You're drinking a nice hot cup of tea. And you've put nice chamomile and some berry uh, leaves and all kinds of fancy leaves into your tea. And you're sitting with that tea and you're thinking about how you need to, you know, get that book out next year. And how many people are going to be buying it. And why the other person is so successful. And why I can never get myself to get around to editing. Why can I never find a publisher? And by the time you look down... the the tea is already gone. You don't even know what it tasted like. This is the art of Zen. To be here now, every minute and enjoy it. And not worry about what you have to do. The motivation comes from increasing your prana. That prana comes from sunlight, natural sunlight, morning sunlight. And from oxygen. So how do you increase the oxygen level in your body? Breathing. Breathing. Breathing increases prana which is subtle. It is subtle energy. It is not directly connected with oxygen. Yes, it gives you a lot of oxygen. But it increases the network of subtle energy that moves inside your body. So when you finish your breathing... You are instantly energized. You feel low. You feel like, I don't feel like going to the gym. Sit down for five minutes and just do three rounds of Vastrika. <laughs> Automatically the oxygen increases in your body. And you feel like doing things. Go for a run. Go for a run. Go for a swim. Exercise. Exercise doesn't take time. It just takes a decision. It's a choice you make to include it in your life. In order to be motivated, it's not enough to have ideas. Like I need to have a, a, a include exercise in my life. I need to stop drinking. I need to give up wine. I need to stop smoking. You've got to have the discipline. And set aside a certain time in the day for the activity you want to do. You want to write an article for a physical therapy magazine about success with a patient. But by the time you get round to it, you've forgotten all the details. The thing to do is to say, tomorrow morning for 15 minutes, I'm going to start writing my notes. From 8 o'clock to 8.15. And you need that discipline. 
And as you keep doing the things you like to do, the motivation then becomes intrinsic. It comes from within. But in the beginning, you need that discipline. I Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I will go to the gym between 8.30 and 9.30. That's it. I don't do anything else. I don't let anything else interfere. Three days a week, I will go to the gym. Oh, I can find a million excuses not to go. Oh, my head is paining. You know, maybe I should buy vegetables instead today. <laughs> I haven't looked at my Facebook in a long time. I haven't done a blog post. I can think of a number of things. But 8.30 to 9.30 and Monday, Wednesday, Friday are my gym days. So you do it and the motivation comes automatically. Once you get your bottle ready and your gym bag ready and your shoes on, you just have to go. It's a deliberate choice you make. The motivation to do things that benefit others is always comes much easier. I am doing this because I know a lot of people are finding peace from it. A lot of people are finding meaning from it. Forget a lot of people. Five people are finding peace. That makes me want to come and sit and do it. Some people are motivated with money and success. And that's a great motivator. Money is a great motivator. You go to New York City and you see all these young people going to work at 8 o'clock in the morning, not returning before 10 o'clock at night, paying fancy rents for their homes, which they barely see. They barely see their children. But they're making that money and that motivates them to go. To go and work and work and work and do 14 hours, 16 hour days. It's not true for everybody. Nothing can persuade me. Money doesn't attract me at all. What attracts me much more is just spreading the joy. That's a bigger, um, you know, adrenaline booster for me. Like when I see a hall full of people and I'm talking to them and I'm connecting with them, that feeling for me is better than anything in the world. It doesn't give me money, but it gives me a sense of satisfaction. What else? Love. Love is perhaps the biggest motivator. When you think that you have to keep healthy because you love your children and you want to stay for their graduation and their marriage, and to hold your grandchildren in your hand, then you drop that bad habit. You go to the gym, start going for a walk. You start going for regular checkups and taking care because you're not doing it for a selfish reason. You're doing it because you love your family and you want to be there for them, to do for them. So it's not just for me that I'm doing it. That is a huge motivation. A lot of people get their inspiration from others. Some will get it from within. For certain things, you have a natural tendency to do it, so it comes automatically. To keep your room clean, for example. Lavanya will mess up her room and then suddenly she'll decide and she'll lick it clean. Where that motivation comes from, I didn't tell her to do it. Right, But my other daughter, for example, needs me to go and say, baby, let's clean. And then she will clean. But she needs to be inspired by me to get me to start her on the track. So just like that, we watch inspirational videos all the time. Why are you here listening to me? Because something about what I say is what you need to hear to get you started. 
I mean, it's what you've been thinking about. It's what you really want to do. But since I'm saying it, she said, you know, she said that, I think I must do this. It gives you that little extra spur. And we watch it. People are watching inspirational videos every day because they cannot get it within themselves to get started. Sometimes people's lives themselves are inspiration. To see how someone spent their entire life devoted to the upliftment of people. Or to see how a person with no legs ran an Olympic race. Those kind of things inspire us. People that go above and beyond inspire us. And we take that energy from them. This is why we, we at, at least in India, I think even here, if you think of even the Christian tradition or even the Jewish tradition, you go regularly to the temple because you feed off that energy that is positive, that lifts you up. Something that the pastor says, something that the rabbi says, something that the guru says, that builds up something within you. And the last thing I'll tell you, which I think is the most important. Surround yourself with positive people that lift and nurture. This is perhaps, if you listened only to this, you would be motivated to reach your own potential, fulfill your own destiny much easier. Don't think that just because you related you have to be in that person's company. Surround yourself with people from all walks of life who bring out your potential, who appreciate you for what you are, who tell you that you can do much more than this and make you reach within now your own destiny to open up for you so you make all the right choices and are enthusiastic all the time. When you realize, you know, that this is all we have and we don't realize this very often, you have to pause and take those aha moments and say, this is it. I have this moment. I'm surrounded by five, six people today who are honoring me by being here. And I am happy. I have faith that what I say is going to impact their lives. I have the courage in this moment that if anything goes wrong, that I learn to face it. And I have so much gratitude for being given this privilege. Each one of you has faith, courage and gratitude in every moment for so many things. And that is all you need. That is all you need. And if you remain in that moment fully present with whatever it brings, whether you're sad or you're happy, whether things are good or they're bad, whether it's a depressing day or the most jubilant day, whether you've succeeded or you've lost, whatever it brings, if you remain fully present, you will be motivated to achieve that you which you were put on this earth to achieve. It's all in your own hands.